Mayor Richardson, would you please introduce our governor and then we will get started. Lois, you need to un unmute. You need to so, unmute. Good morning. Um, good morning, Governor. It's so nice to see you on, as I mentioned earlier, this bright, beautiful, sunny morning in um, in Michigan. Um, Governor Gretchen Whitmore is that woman from Michigan, inspired by her family. She's devoted her life to public service, governed through unprecedented colliding crises, and remains laser focused on getting things done that will make a difference in people's lives. Governor Whitmer has been tested amidst historic circumstances. The governor has led with grit and grace, tackling Michigan's longstanding infrastructure, health care, and education challenges while taking a decisive action to save lives and rebuild the state's economy. And I'm going to just put my little bit in here. And many of us are alive today. And we have family members that are still alive today because of the stand that she took. And I salute you for that, Governor. Despite a barrage of attacks from radical militia groups, the Michigan legislature and former president, she continues to govern with a steely resolve and dedication to delivering for the people of, of Michigan. Her administration has not made has not major policy victories create 11,000 new auto jobs while working to diversify the economy, passing balance, bipartisan budgets, making the largest investment in K-12 education in state history without raising taxes, without raising taxes, delivering critical COVID relief and creating two successful workforce education programs Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners. She's also fulfilling her signature promise to fix the damn roads with a $3.5 billion in bonds for roads and bridges to tangibly improve people's daily drives and water infrastructure. Improvements that will create 7,500 jobs. Governor Whitmer is tough. She's tackling the big challenges Michigan faces with bold solutions and decisive leadership. She acted quickly and led with science and data to save lives and safeguard public health while ensuring families, communities, students, workers, and small businesses had the support they needed to get through the COVID-19 pandemic. And thank you for that. She faced down threats against her life and effectively deals with a partisan Republican legislature bent on blocking progress. Finally, Governor Whitmore is at resilient. She will continue working to ensure that every Michigander has a great public education and a path to a good paying job. Every community has clean, safe drinking water and everyone can drive to work or drop their kids off at school safely without blowing a tire or cracking a windshield. She knows that our best days are ahead of us and will never stop fighting for Michigan's families. Governor Whitmore and her husband, Mark Mallory, live in Lansing with Kevin and Doug, the first dogs of Michigan. Her oldest daughter, Sherry, is a student at the University of Michigan and her younger daughter, Sydney, will be joining her sister in the fall. Her three stepsons, Alex, Mason, and Winston, all live in Michigan as well. Governor Whitmore earned a bachelor's degree and law degree from Michigan State, Go Green. A lifelong Michigander, Gretchen Whitmore is honored to serve as governor of the state of Michigan. And we are honored to have her as our governor and to have her here with us this morning. Welcome, Governor. Thank you, Mayor. It's so good to see you. I appreciate that introduction. Thank Go Green is kind of a dangerous thing to say in Washington <laughs> County, unless you're talking about Eastern. <laughs> well, but I'm glad, glad to be here. Us, some I'm, of us are bold enough to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Love the game last week. <laughs> I'm glad to. I'm glad to be here with you. And Mayor, I got my booster shot in Ypsilanti uh, at the RV, the mobile 
uh, unit that, that you've been using to meet people where they are and help keep people safe. And I applaud the work that you're doing. And I'm so grateful that I was able to get my booster right there. A little sore this morning, but feeling good. And I hope anyone else who's eligible and ready to get their booster will do that too. So thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, I think I got to take you on the road with me, Mayor. You're that welcome. <laughs> So, you know, I'm here with you this Saturday morning. Uh, the Congress just got an infrastructure bill passed, which is great. It'll add to the work that we are doing in Michigan. So if you don't love orange barrels yet, it's time to embrace them because we're gonna do, be able to do even more thanks to the work that they got done in Washington DC last night. I also was in Washtenaw County all day yesterday it was my youngest daughter's birthday. She's a freshman at the University of Michigan and um, took them out to eat after I signed the second bill in the tampon tax package, eliminating the tax on tampons and um, maxi pads, et cetera, which has been an onerous uh, tax for women and for people who menstruate. Um, and we know that uh, we've been working on trying to get this done for 10 years. I introduced the bill when I was in the legislature. I never thought I'd take this long to get it done. And I never imagined I'd be the one to put my signature on it and make it the law of our state. But I'm really, really pleased that we were able to do that. You know, as we get ready for next year, there's no question that one of the other things that happened this week, the, um, the elections in New Jersey and Virginia um, are kind of a, a reminder of something that we all know, right? We all have always known that next year is gonna be a tough year, a tough election year. It's a midterm always, always tough. We also know that the hyper politicization of this public health crisis has meant that we are, are still very divided. Um, and so I've always been very sober about how tough next year's election is going to be. But I think what happened this week is uh, maybe a wake up call for a lot of people, unlike us, we all paid very close attention. But I think um, we know how high these stakes are. The only thing the only thing standing between Michigan looking like Texas when it comes to women's health rights or it's voters' rights, the only thing that's keeping that from happening here is my veto. And that's heavy, right? I mean, that's, that's scary how very real that threat is. And I'm proud to use my veto and to tell them it's not, I'm never gonna sign these efforts into law, but make no mistake. And I'm sure Jocelyn and Dana talked about this as well. But make no mistake, all that same legislation is in our legislature has passed and it's just teed up. I've vetoed a number of bills, but that all would have happened if I wasn't in the seat. And so I'm grateful, even on the hardest day, and there have been a few, right? When people show up with their semi-automatic rifles on my front lawn or make threats at me or my family, even on those hard days, I'm grateful to be here because I know by what, by following the science and listening to the experts, we've saved thousands of lives in Michigan. I know that it's my veto that's keeping us from devolving into a place like Texas when it comes to women's rights and voters' rights. I know that that $17 billion education budget that I signed into law that finally closed that inequitable gap in funding between wealthier school districts and poorer districts, we got that done. And we've done a lot of good things and we're gonna keep doing it. But the stakes are really high. And that's why I wanted to just be here with all of you this morning and thank you for the work that you've done to support all of us who are in these positions and, and as heavy as they feel, we're all grateful to be here. But it also is a reminder of how much, how important our work is as we look to the next 12 months. So thank you for giving me a few minutes of your Saturday morning. I know Michigan doesn't play till eight. I don't even know what time Michigan State plays. I don't know when Eastern plays, but I also know that None of, none of those things are as important as the work that we do together to save democracy, to make Michigan a place where every person has a good paying job, a high quality of life, and real opportunity for them and their families. So anyway, I'll stop the monologue. I know that we're going to open it up for some questions, and I'm looking forward to it. So Mayor, are you moderating uh, questions or do I just go? Oh, hi Mayor. No, not me. Okay. Uh, I, I will, uh, no, and Chris, Chris, can yeah, you, you want me to do it? Okay, that sounds fine. Okay, All right, thank so you. 
first person in the chat with their hand up is Craig Bloomer, and then after that will be Janet Cannon. So Craig, you are mic'd up and ready to go. You'll have to unmute yourself if you are, you are yeah, muted. Craig, you'll need to unmute yourself. All right, I'm going to disable him talking for now. Uh, Janet, oop, what happened? Come on. All right, there we go. Janet, you are up. Go ahead, Janet. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Governor Whitmer. And we are all really doing our best to gear up to make sure that you get every Washtenaw vote. Uh, I do have a specific question, which is a pitch. Um, I've had the privilege to be able to work with the county officials on distributing, well, helping people apply. In particular, I'm helping the people who speak Spanish to apply for the Sarah um, housing assistance, rental assistance to keep them in their homes. Mm -hmm. And it's just taking so long. And I know that we're better off here than we have been than they are in other counties, but it's just taking so long and the landlords are just clogging the courts and everybody is super stressed. So my question is, I have read that some other states or some other, I don't know, smaller jurisdictions have just decided to go ahead and pay the landlords and then do the paperwork afterward. And I just wondered if you could possibly consider that. I bet you would get tons of points with the landlord establishment who are spending a lot on lawyers and it might really clear the bottleneck. Yeah, so Janet, that's a, a great suggestion. Um, I will look into it. I, you know, I don't know enough about it to tell you that that's something that we can do, but certainly mm -hmm. if we can, that's something worth, um, worth pursuing. So I will look into it. I'm sure Ron, who um, is on here with me, will make sure that we follow up with you. But that's a, a good suggestion and I appreciate it. Thank you so much, because I do want to also mention that Washtenaw County, the uh, OCED here has just done an amazing job of staffing up and being attentive mm -hmm. and having us reach out to the Latinos and other people reach out to other communities. But it's still really hard, so great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the work that you're doing. It's so important. It's awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we... da, da, da. And next up is Mishumi Khan. If you, you are mic'd up and ready to go. Uh, Mishumi, are you out there? Show you right. my, my coffee cup so you can see that's Dolly Parton and it says pour yourself nice. a cup of ambition. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. That's <laughs> brilliant. My sister gave it All to right. me. There's got to be some other questions out there for our governor. <laughs> Chris, my hand is up. I don't know that. Go you ahead. Saw Lois, you are on. Go for it. Okay. Um, governor, now that we do have some, um, I won't say extra money, but money that a nice little sum for roads. I have uh, heard and have read that uh, I'm not sure if it's England and Germany or Germany or some other European countries, they have a product that they use for their roads that lasts and lasts and lasts. And I know, I'm, and I've talked with others about this and they say it's very expensive and that might be so, but is it possible to, now that we do have this money coming in, take a look and maybe do uh, X number of roads a year or something, but at least start on that. Because if we could convert all of our roads to whatever that substance is that they use that lasts much longer than what ours does, uh, I think that would be fantastic. So Lois, one of the things that I really um, have come to appreciate about MDOT is that they do they're, they are not just willing to, but they're eager to um, pilot different potential solutions. Um, we've unfortunately under invested in our infrastructure for so long, we haven't really been rebuilding roads, we've just been resurfacing them. And because of that, now we've got so many roads that have to be rebuilt completely. Um, one of the examples of, of something that uh, is being piloted is uh, recycled. Uh, road material, and we're working with Dow 
Um, they've got recycled plastics that can be used and it's, it's much more environmentally friendly, but also um, has real potential in terms of longevity. Uh, so I, Lois, I'm happy to uh, continue this conversation with you and, and pull in my friends at MDOT so that they can tell us a little bit more about the kind of materials you're referencing and, and what we're doing on that front. But um, I appreciate your, your uh, creativity and solutions mindedness. I'm not surprised to get that from you, but I do appreciate it. And we'll follow up with you directly. Thank you so very much. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, Mushumi, you are ready and go ahead and ask your question. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, Mary, Chris, and the entire panelists, Mayor. This has been an amazing panel um, and morning. I, I have uh, two questions, if you, if I may. One is, I would love to hear Governor Whitmer's take on the Virginia elections and what you think the implications might be for, for Michigan moving forward. And my second question is, is more of an offer of support that I, I noticed in the Biden uh, campaign, there were communities, particularly in my own community, uh, you know, the immigrant, Bangladeshi, Muslim, whatever it is, I know that there's a caucus and they're doing great things. I'm very proud of all of that. Um, but how can I, we, not, to, and I'm saying I, but I really mean there's a whole team of us and there are many of us, including people who translated this meeting into Bangla at Mary's suggestion. How can we help you to reach those communities perhaps that are not as reached? Or are there, um, and the flip side is, are there communities you feel that, perhaps are not being reached out to as much and we can certainly kind of divide and conquer and, and, and help. So mm -hmm. I, I love Mary's point to be positive and specific. So that will, that's my uh, two questions. The Virginia election, as well as how can we help you reach communities that perhaps have not been targeted? Yeah, Mushimi, thank you so much for that question. Um, I think I'll, I'll answer them in reverse, right? So with regard to, you know, um, I think empowering, embracing and enlisting community support, uh, Ron Owens on my team is working with various different kinds of, for lack of a better word, caucuses for Whitmer, right? So um, I, we'd love to pursue kind of that, that, that thought with you and get your feedback and see if you've got uh, more specific suggestions for how we how we pull um, communities in. Oh, my face just got a lot bigger. I'm gonna sit back further. Um, so, and then let's talk about the elections, right? There's no good for me to be a pundit. So my team's always like, don't analyze elections, but I will for you because of course this is our family conversation. Um, we knew Virginia was not looking great. And frankly, the president's numbers are not great anywhere in the country, even Michigan right now. Um, I. I think that this infrastructure package having been passed will be helpful, uh, but I do think that uh, Terry uh, McAuliffe had his own set of issues too. And Virginia has got a long storied history, but we know midterms are hard. They're hard for the party that is in the White House. So um, I think the, the race that was more concerning to me was New Jersey and not because New Jersey is more like Michigan than Virginia. You know, when California, when Gavin Newsom overwhelmingly pushed back on the recall efforts, people said, oh, that's a good sign for you. You know, Michigan's not California. Michigan's not Virginia. We're not New Jersey either. But the New Jersey race I thought was most concerning because it was a surprise. We did not know how close that was going to be. I don't think that as a Democratic governor who is on the board of the Democratic Governors Association, uh, that any of us really knew how serious, how seriously close that race was going to be. That's a problem. So, you know, as we go into next year, I do think that staying focused on the fundamentals, um, you know, living our values every day and being smart about it, but also trying to stay focused on fundamentals so we can draw people into the conversation, right? We were able to do that in 2018. Trump had alienated a lot of reasonable people, reasonable independents, or even some moderate Republicans, um, he's not around. And so we can't make the assumption that all the people that were with us in 2018 will be with us this year. Some people are, are not happy, whether it's, you know, variety of things on the federal level. So we can't necessarily control all those pieces, but what we can control is talking about the things that we have done. We turned a $3 billion projected deficit into a $3.5 billion surplus. 
That's how we made the largest investment in the education of our kids in the history of our state. 267, 260,000 more people have healthcare today than did when I took my oath of office three years ago. 170,000 people are enrolled in the Michigan Reconnect or the Futures for Frontliners, which is the program to eliminate the financial barrier that kept people out of getting skills. So that's, that's free college, that's community college, that's skilled trades. There are orange barrels everywhere in Michigan. So we have been doing the hard work on all of these fronts. Um, we I have to talk about that. We have to own it. We have to make sure people know all the good that has happened here. And that's why I think, um, you know, Michigan is Michigan. We can learn lessons from others, but we've got to stay focused on our Michigan centric vision and plan and pulling other Michiganders into it. All right, I think we need to finish up here. Uh, Ron Owen is waving to me through the chat that uh, you have another meeting to go to. So yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. unless, that, unless that's incorrect, uh, I think we're gonna thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. And, uh, for, Thanks, for Chris. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you all. Thank you.